Hi, how's it going? Welcome to Code with Zine. Today's video, we gotta extract IPs out of this string that we have here. Why? Well, because that's what lead code 93 restore IP addresses is asking us to do. As you can see, it says a valid IP address consists of exactly four integers separated by single dots. Each integer is between 0 and 255 inclusive and cannot have leading zeros. Now, don't worry, I'm going to explain all of this with visualization. But first, let's see what the question is actually asking us to do. So it says, for example, 0.1.2.201 and for example, 192.168.1.1 are valid IP addresses. But for example, this one, because it has a leading zero, as you can see, this zero here is okay. But because we have zero and then other numbers, this is not a valid IP address. And this one as well. This one is not a valid IP address because we can't have 312 because it's not in the range of 0 to 255. And this one is also not a valid IP address because we don't have a dot here. Now in this question, we're given this string called S, as you can see, and this is our string. And we just have to inject or insert these dots in a way that they're going to give us valid IP addresses. And we're going to return all of the possible correct valid IP addresses that we're going to have. So for example, if we're given this, we can have these two valid IP addresses. Why only these two? Well, because these are the only two possible IP addresses that we can have when we've used all of these numbers and they're actually legit. As you can see, we have 255. It's between the range that we can have between zero and 255. And we don't have any numbers that have a leading zero. And again, if we check, we're actually using all of the numbers. 255, 255, 255, 255, 11, 11, 135, 135. Again, same thing for this one. 255, 255, 255, 255, 111, 111, 35, 35. This is really important because we can't have, for example, 2, 5, 5, 2. Why? Well, because that means even though we have four legit numbers that are between 0 and 255, we've not used all of the other remaining numbers that we have here. So we actually have to use all of the numbers, like for example, this one that we have here. So the takeaway here is that we need to have four parts and we need to use all of the numbers that we have here and the numbers should be between 0 and 255. Now let's get to the visualization. All right, I'm going to put this here and call it S and then we're going to have a result array that we're going to store our answers at because we have to return something. And just like we saw in the previous slides, we were returning our answers inside of an array. Now we're going to use backtracking because we need to find the possible valid answers that we can have from this point on. So we're going to use backtracking to explore all of the possible scenarios. And we're going to start with an empty array. This array is going to be basically holding our current answer. We're going to add numbers to it. And once we actually get to an answer, we're going to push it inside of our result. And don't worry, let's start with the visualization. You're going to see how things work with your own eyes. As you can see, in the beginning, we're going to be like, OK, let's see what will happen if we consider two to be our first part. So as you can see, we've added two to this empty array. In the beginning, we only had an empty array and then we added two. Why? Well, because we said, let's see what will happen if we only start with two. So let's see what will happen if two is our first part in our IP and we only have four parts. But we can also say, what will happen if we start with 25? So what will happen if our first part is 25 instead of only two. And then we're going to say, let's see what will happen if we actually have 255. So 255, 255. Here we're exploring what will happen if the first part of our IP is 255. So each one of these are actually representing what will happen if the first part is two, what will happen if the first part is 25, and what will happen if the first part is 255. Can we have more than this? Well, we can't because if we add two, we're going to be like, what will happen if we start with 2,552 and we can't have any numbers that are larger than 255. So the maximum scenario for each part that we can have is going to be three. If you don't fully get this sentence yet, don't worry, because we're going to have another run. In this round, we're going to be like, OK, so this path is representing what will happen if the first part is two. So let's take this. And let's explore. We're going to be like, OK, if the first part is two, what will happen if the second part is five or what will happen if the second part is 55, as you can see, or what will happen if the third part is 552, like so. And if we check, 
we can't have 552 because it's larger than 255. So we're just going to ignore this entirely. And we're just going to keep on doing this for all of this year. We're going to be like, okay, if we start with 25 and this is going to be our first part, what will happen if the second part is 5? Because the first part is going to be 25 since we're actually exploring this scenario. So the first part is going to be 25. Then we're going to be like, what will happen if the second part is 5? What will happen if the second part is 52? What will happen if the second part is 525? Which we can't have because it's larger than 255. And then we're going to repeat this for this one as well. So it's basically just exploring all of the possible scenarios. Now let's see what will happen if we actually keep on going down on this path. Well, here we already have 2 and 5. So 2 is going to be the first part of our IP and 5 is going to be the second part if we're actually going down this path. And then we're going to be like, okay, if we actually go down this path, for the third part, we can either have 5 or we can either have 52 or we could have 525, but we can actually have this because it's larger than 255. So we're just going to pick one of those two and we're going to keep on going with it. For example, we're going to keep two, five, and five. So the first part, second part, third part. First part, second part, and third part. If we keep on doing this, we're going to have this second five in our array. And then we're going to be like, okay, let's explore the fourth part. Well, the fourth part can be two. And this is valid. This is between zero and 255, between zero and 255, between zero and 255, between zero and 255. But we're done with all of our four parts. However, we've not used all of the numbers that we have here. So that's not going to be a valid answer because even though we actually got to the four parts of our IP and all of these numbers are between 0 and 255, each number is representing one of our parts and they're all between 0 and 255, but we have many numbers that we've still not used. So this is not going to be a valid answer. And if we actually go down this path, we're not going to reach an answer. So now that we have this back here, let me show you a valid answer. So as you can see on this path, 255 is like saying the first part is 255. So red is going to be 255. Then we can keep on going down this path and say, okay, the second part can also be 255. As you can see, red is the first part and then yellow is the second part. This one is also 255. And then we can have 11, for example, as the third part. So 255, 255, 11. And then for the fourth part, we can have 135, 135, as you can see. And since we've actually used all of the numbers that we have here, and all of these numbers are between 0 and 255, we can add this to our result, like so. This is a valid answer. Or for example, we could have 255, 255, 111, and 35. That's also a valid answer because it checks these two conditions. They're all between 0 and 255, and we would be using all of the numbers that we have here. So this tree is going to keep on going until we actually store all of the possible solutions that are going to check these two conditions. Now, this is going to be it. Let's code this in the simplest way possible. Alrighty, let's solve this together. So we are already given the string, as you can see, and it's called S. And now we need to have our result array that's going to be initialized to an empty array. And then we're going to have our backtracking function. So function backtrack. And then this is going to take two variables. And don't worry, I'm going to explain everything here. The first one that this is going to take is going to be looking really similar. It's going to be start. So basically where we start from. So for example, for the first part, we start with two and then we were like, okay, let's see what will happen if we start with 25. And then we were like, okay, let's see what will happen if we start with 255. So where we start from, this is going to be that. And then we have our parts like so. So each part, if you remember, we had four colors. And each time once we went down the tree, we were adding an extra part. So we need to have four parts. And these four parts are going to be representing our IP because each valid IP has four parts. Okay, so let's get inside this function and write down our two simple conditions. So we were like, if we've had four parts, so if the length of our part is four, if we've had four parts and like so, if we've used all of the string that we have, if we've actually used all of the string, that means we have an answer. So we're going to say if start is equal to s dot length, meaning the length of our string. And if we have four parts, as you can see, that means we have an answer. So here we're going to say result dot push, just like we saw in the slides. And we're going to push 
our part, but this is an array and we need to push a string inside of our array and add our dots. So we're going to say parts dot join of a dot like so. So this is going to convert our parts, which is an array that has the four numbers that we want to add to our result and it's going to convert it into a string and put a dot between each one. And after that, we're just going to return because this is going to be our answer. Now, if our parts dot length is equal to four, but we don't actually fulfill this one. So we're not going to get inside of this one and return, but our parts dot length is four. That means we've actually had four legit numbers, but we've not used all of the string so we're just going to return because that's not going to be a valid answer and we don't want that just like the example we had when we said we have two five five two these four numbers are legit but we've not used all of the numbers that we were given by the question now here we need to call our backtracking function over and over again and the way we need to do this is by saying okay let's see what will happen if we start with two let's see what will happen if we start with 25 let's see what will happen if we start with 255 and then, for example, if we start with 255, we have to say, okay, let's see what will happen if the second part is 2. Let's see what will happen if the second part is 25. Let's see what will happen if the second part is 255. And then so on and so forth. Just like you see here. So for doing this, we need to have a loop. We're going to say for let i being equal to 1. And we want to keep on looping as long as i is smaller or equal to 3. And i plus plus y3 because if you remember, let me add this here like so, because if you remember, we only had three possible paths for each part. We could say, take one number, for example, two, or take two number, for example, 25, or take three numbers, for example, 255. So we only have three possible paths that we can take. And that's why we're saying keep on looping for only three times. We go from one all the way to three. And then here we say we need to get these parts of our string that we're talking about. So for example, we need to get this 2 or we need to get this 25 or we need to get this 255 inside of our string that we're given, right? So here we say, okay, let's call this segment, for example. And this is going to be s dot slice because we want to take from the start all the way to start plus i. And in the beginning, i is going to be only 1 and then 2 and then 3. So this is why... We go from this to this and this, like so. And once we've done that, we need to see if this segment is actually valid. By valid, I mean if it is between 0 and 255 and if it doesn't have any leading zeros. So here we're going to say if is valid of segment. So if the segment is valid, do the following. And you might be like, Z, we don't have is valid. Well, you're definitely correct, but we're going to implement this in literally a few seconds and this is going to be like two lines of code don't worry it's just going to check if the segment is between 255 and 0 and if it has any leading zeros it's only like two lines of code so let's not worry about that let's just focus on that we're going to check if the segment is valid so if it is between 0 and 255 and it doesn't have any leading zeros we need to add that to our part so we're going to say parts dot push of segment because this segment is valid since we're already inside of this if statement. And once we've added this to our part, we need to call our backtracking function with it so we can actually explore that path and go down that path. So we're going to say start plus i because start has been updated based on how far we went through this string. As you can see, we went from start to start plus i once we got the segment. So that means we've actually traversed or went through the string so we want to say backtrack at this position star plus i because we're at star plus i because we have this segment and we're going to pass it our parts because now our parts is updated with this new segment. So we want to see what will happen if we go down this path. This is where we said, for example, if we have two, let's see what will happen if this is the first part and this had three possible paths on its own and then the next one had three possible paths on its own as well. So this is going to explore those paths. We're just going to be like, okay, we found the segment, we pushed it to our parts, I'm going to give you the parts and you go explore. And that's going to be it. But for the next part, for example, we said we want to start with two, but we also want to see what will happen if we start with 25. But we also want to see what will happen if we start with 255, right? So we need to pop what we just added inside of our parts. 
so we can actually explore other possible scenarios in the next round. So we push the segment inside of our parts. This is going to explore on its own, but here we need to make sure that we have a clean start for the next round because we want to see what will happen if we start with 25 as well. And we don't want to be limited to only starting with two. And that's why we pop it. And then we're going to keep on looping and explore different paths as we go through this loop. And this is going to be it. At the end, we have to call our backtracking function for the first time. And we're going to start from the index of zero. So the first character inside of our spring, that's going to be our start. And we start with an empty array, just like we saw in the slides. And then at the end, we're going to return our result array because it's going to be filled with answers because of our backtracking function. But we also need to implement our simple is valid function. So function is valid. This is going to take a segment. And here we're going to say if it has a leading zero, we need to return false because it's not going to be valid. So we're going to say if segment dot length is greater than one and segment at the first character is equal to zero return false simple as that and the reason we check if it has a length greater than one is because zero by itself is accepted but what's not accepted is for example zero and one so we need to make sure it has at least two characters and then check if the first character is zero or not and if it is zero it is not accepted and then we need to check if it is between 255 and zero so we're going to say if number version of segments so this is converting it into an integer is greater than 255 or number version of segment is smaller than zero if we have either of these two conditions return false and if that was not the case return true simple as that this is going to be our simple is valid function and this is going to be all of our code as you can see now i hope i have not made any typos so let's see if we can actually get accepted moment of truth and awesome we got accepted now let me zoom out and submit this so you can actually see if you can actually pass all the test cases and let's see and we got accepted that's awesome thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe and keep on coding